the grocers and I promise you if I mess up your last name and call you the glacers because like <laughs> between you guys and Courtney's last name they're so similar and then we have Miss Laura Woodside that are also going to speak on this topic so I'm really excited so first off I am Alexis welcome and you know I I'm going to start off by telling you guys, like I talked to Courtney a little while ago about updates from this weekend. She is going to go out, get a, a whole training put together. Apparently there was a lot that was learned. I was not there, but there's a lot of takeaways and she didn't, I think she really wanted to sit down and put her thoughts together before she presented, presented it to us. So stay tuned for that. And I know that I know that it's gonna be bomb. I know they, they said they learned a ton from Brock Johnson, but I wanna talk to you guys about, um, I know a lot of people personally have felt stuck lately, right? Um, one of the ways or the best ways in my opinion to get out of that stuck feeling is to try something new right? The best thing that you can do for yourself is try something new. If you're feeling stuck, no big deal. Like maybe what you were doing prior no longer is working for you. Or maybe you just need to pivot kind of like what happened during COVID. So many people had to pivot. And that's where a lot of people actually found network marketing period was because they had to pivot their mindset. They had to pivot how they were making money. They had to pivot their entire lives, right? We all went through it together. So, um, you know, today I went to church and I'm telling you, man, every time I go to this church, like the pastor is spot on. And so anyways, he was talking about, um, about feeling comfortable. And are you, are you comfortable where you're at? If you're comfortable where you're at, that means you're not growing. Right. And so he said, he said, comfort is not what God wants for you. So whether you're applying for, or when you're applying for a job, do you, and, and, and I had to, like think about this, but he asked, do you apply for a job for the skill set that you have? Or do you normally apply for a job that's something that's going to better you, something that's going to grow you? Do you? Absolutely. You want that high dollar. So you know, in order to get there, you've got to create those skills to be able to get there, right? So I, th I thought about that. I'm like, yeah, why don't we apply this to our own businesses? It is the same exact thing. If we are not pushing ourselves to grow and if we're going to remain comfortable and still continue to do everything that we've always done, then we're going to get everything that we've always got, period, right? So I love, love, love learning new skills and Tonight, we are going to talk specifically about how to host a vendor event. Um, I'm going to, I will briefly talk a, kind of a little bit about my experience. I am going to give you guys some of my own um, tips, and then I am going to pass it on to Laura, and she is going to tell you about her experience. So in my tenure here, I have done a handful of events. Um, I have done a few of, and this sunlight is killing me, so I'm gonna have to get up in a minute. But the, I have done a few, what's called living room socials. Um, living room socials are essentially where you bring a small group of your friends and family into your home into the middle of your living room and you talk about what you have your hands on. You guys are familiar with Tupperware parties and whatever, right? Same concept, same exact concept. Um, I mean, I know there's like a millionaire that lives down the street. She's done um, like Sunday brunches and bubble, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, it was when the skincare line came out and basically she was sampling the skincare and she had some champagne and, you know, like, some little treats. I thought, oh my gosh, that sounds so awesome, right? What woman want? What woman wouldn't want to go get pampered on a Sunday? Um, but sometimes you just kind of have to think outside of the box, right? Um, but for me, I've done a couple of living room socials. 
And what I've personally done is invited my friends that I have spoken to about what we have our hands on. I've asked them to join me and I will be very upfront with them about what it is that I'm presenting on. I never want to try to um, persuade someone to say, come to a, a, I don't know, a, you know, a wine and dine party. And then they find out, oh no, she's, she's trying to pitch me a sale. No, be upfront, be, you know, be very genuine about what it is that you and why you want them to come and then um be very casual start on time like some of these things are really really important to people because we live in a fast-paced life right give me a second because this sunlight is killing me i'm sorry hold on okay much better sorry so Okay, so living room socials are very easygoing. Um, I have never done anything where I've included alcohol. I've always tried to keep it as simple as possible for the reason that I want people to know that if they join my team, number one, this is not something that you have to do. If anyone in here has done a living room social or you've done a vendor event, drop it in the chat because it, it's really interesting to kind of know um, how many of you guys actually have done this. A vendor event, me, let's see. Oh yeah, Sabrina has as well. Uh, no, no. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. That's, that's fantastic. I'm, I'm really proud of you guys just for kind of stepping outside of what the norm is here, right? Because a lot of what we do is social media driven, but there is nothing wrong. There is nothing wrong with getting in front of people and talking to people about what it is that you do. If you go to the baseball fields for your son's baseball game and you're sitting there in the stands talking to a mama, it's no different, no different at all. So don't make it feel icky. Don't make it feel like, oh my gosh, I don't know that I want to do this. I'm here to tell you like, it's so simple. It really, really is. So, all right. So living room socials, the way that I have hosted these is I have had a clipboard at the front at, to where everyone is filling out their information because I want that information to be able to follow up with them, right? If Susie Q brings her niece or whoever, um, I don't know them personally. I want them here, but at the same token, I need to, to find a way to be able to follow up with that individual. So it's really important that you have some type of um, form that they fill out and um, to where you can actually reach them in, the, in that follow-up. I have done giveaways. Uh, the giveaway that I've done is, um, you know, like put your, your information in, in a ball. And um, for my living room socials specifically, I got like a shaker bottle. I've thrown some activate in there. I think I've also done um, three day samples, which is awesome, right? You want to be able to get these samples in their hands. Um, and, and so for me with my living room socials, because it's been very small and I say very small at the most, I think I had 10 people here at the most. Um, and that's that's like including thrivers that came to actually um, give their testimony and talk about it. So, and that's what we did. We sat down, we started on time, had some water, had some fruit or crackers, and uh, we talked about our Thrive experience. We talked about how long we've been doing it, what it's done for us, each one of us, kind of where we're at with the business. And then I threw on the quick video that's on YouTube, what is Thrive? And it was so simple. I think it's like eight minutes long or something. I don't know. I don't even remember. Maybe not even that long. Um, super, super quick. Then I've gone, I went around the room and I just had an open conversation with people, asked them what it is that they're looking for, what it is that they had questions about. And we got into conversation, um, closed it up. And, you know, I did my drawing right then and there. Um, and people, you know, people kind of left. Now, the one thing that I did do as well with my living room socials was when somebody 
Ugh. When someone decided that they wanted to go ahead and make a purchase, at that point, I would take my laptop and I would go into the front room. So I had that one on one time with them. Number one, to be able to, to talk to them specifically about their goals without getting interrupted from someone else. And, and people have been very respectful in that regard. Um, so I was able to, you know, kind of hone in on them because that's what it's about is trying to drill down and figure out what's right for them. Um, and sometimes people don't want to openly discuss it in front of a room full of people what their goals are. And that's fine too, right? So um, so at that point, once everyone left, then I was able to go and do my follow-ups. And I had a list of people to be able to, um, to reach out to. You know, at that point, I kind of knew or could kind of gauge where it was that people were standing and what it was that was holding them back from actually pulling the trigger on, um, on purchasing their three steps. And maybe it wasn't the three steps that they wanted. Maybe it was just the, you know, activate. Maybe it was just whatever you know, whatever the specific needs of that individual are. Um, but okay, so that's how I run my living room socials. Not very complicated at all. Make it more friendly, make it more open and in a really more intimate setting. This is such a great idea. Oh, you're very welcome, Patricia. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you like it. Okay, so next up, the next thing that I want to talk about is actual vendor events. So vendor events are completely different than living room socials. Vendor events, you will find all kinds of vendor events. So for me, um, uh, well, I, I put down um, a list of them. So at, you know, um, uh, vendor events, you have big, like big social gatherings, right? Um, maybe it's like at, at your, your clubhouse, your HOA clubhouse for a summer event, right? Maybe it's a bridal show. Um, an expo, uh, maybe it's a fitness competition, maybe it's a fall craft show, maybe it's a, a church event. Um, you know, there's lots and lots of things that all different communities do in their area, but it's different for each community, right? So these are just some of the things that kind of came top of mind. Um, and first and foremost, I'm going to tell you, um, I am part of a Facebook group here locally. I don't know about in your area, but um, about scams. Um, there, there, I guess, are a lot of scammers that are doing vendor events and they will um, request for, for payment for you from the actual event and you show up and there's no event. And I mean, luckily, knock on wood, um, that hadn't happened to me because I had found this group, but it was really good knowledge to know because I am not the first person to be like, oh my gosh, they're scamming me. No, I'm the one that, to fall for these scams, okay? <laughs> I'll be very frank with you. So don't spend a lot of money. Don't spend a lot of money on the actual event itself. Uh, the ones that I've done have really, I think they've been like 40 bucks or less. Um, I think that's about average. That's probably a, a good um, dollar amount to be able to say, oh man, that's, that's awesome. Because you don't want to spend so much money that you don't make it back in return, right? Um, and so a couple of, and, and so I'm going to go ahead and get into my actual tips of the event. So dress the part. If you know that you're going to a bridal show, you know your target market is brides. What is it that brides want um, to fit into their dress, right? Point blank, to fit into their dress. If it is an arts and crafts show, nine times out of 10, it's going to be mamas and their little young ones, right? If it's a fitness expo, you know that Maybe, maybe coming in with our fit line is something that you really want to showcase because you've got fitness fanatics there. So knowing your audience is, is really, really key and then dressing that part, right? Um, if you are trying to portray that you are physically fit because of these products, um, you know, maybe you want to wear your Apple watch, tennis shoes, like shorts, be appropriate to to the setting is is I guess my my tip there um 
be approachable. Um, be, being approachable is top. Uh, I, I mean, honest to God, I, I had a friend that was going to come to this last one and I said, prepare to stand, prepare to stand the entire time. And the reason that I say that is because if you're sitting down in a chair, nobody is going to come to you. You're not going to feel like they can talk to you. So you want people as they pass your booth to be able to feel your energy, to be able to know that they can have a conversation with you or they can smile and you'll smile back kind of thing. Um, but they can't see that if you're sitting down and this table of products is blocking you and that. So um, be approachable and, and easily connect with the people as they're walking by. Um, that's probably a, another really good tip because I can't tell you how many times I saw other vendors sitting back, um, not saying a word and waiting for people to come to their table. Whereas I was standing up, I had water, I had, I was giving out samples of our pink pro, um, you know, everyone, everyone wants something. So as, if it's a hot, sunny day here in Texas, that sounds really good to them, right? I had an entire, well, not an entire, but like a big group of boys that they all came over and they just wanted to try the pink pro. I thought it was kind of funny, but you know, they all had different takes. This one kid actually took it and spit it <laughs> out on the floor. He didn't like it. But we joked about it and we made fun and we, you know, it, it lightened the mood. But regardless, like, you know, be approachable. Everyone's human. Everyone's not going to be receptive to what you have, but you can still, you know, treat them as though they're humans and they're not robots. So have a quick elevator speech. Um, I can't tell you how many times so many people just like, they know, they know that you have something for sale. That's for sure, right? Like that's why they're there and they're walking through these events. They want to check out what people have. So when they come to your table, have something quick, ready to go, you know, at, at the tip of your tongue so you know exactly what it is that you want to say to them. Um, and I think that that right there, you can use in any facet of your life, whether it's sitting on the baseball field, talking to the mama next to you, whether you're at the gym working out and you're on the Stairmaster and you've got somebody there next to you, or whether you're in the grocery store and someone's asking about your DFT. So that elevator speech, you know, like real quick, two minutes or less. I, don't, I mean, honestly, or less, because <laughs> I, I want to highlight that or less, because um, people just don't want to hear a long, drawn out 10 minute speech about what it is that you have until they start asking questions. That's when you want to go and dig deeper. Um, if someone's in a, in a hurry, you know, could always approach them with, hey, do you have a second? Um, because then you're asking their permission to talk to them. If they don't, they'll say no and they'll keep walking on and that's it. Like you don't, you don't have to like attack them, right? <laughs> that's not what we're here for. Um, and so for me, I think one thing that I really thought about before I put this event on was, well, this last few was we do a really good job online showing proof. So how could I show proof to this audience? So first, um, I put together a book and I printed, I went to Walgreens I printed a ton of before and afters and I just had them here so people could flip through this photo album to see the before and afters, okay? Um, this tells a thousand, a thousand stories without me having to say a thousand words, right? Um, people could see themselves related in here. They can say, oh my gosh, you know, I'm not like this girl behind the table, but I definitely am like this person. So, you know, they can, they can see themselves fitting into the Thrive Life through our before and afters. Another thing that I did was, um, which I know a lot of us, again, have done online, is actually show the difference between the shakes. So I, uh, I don't know that you could see it on here, but I wrote theirs and ours. And you could see, I mean, you could, you could see here, you could see the chunkiness of theirs, of the other 
products that are out on the market that are chunky and then they look at our ultra micronized shakes and they're like holy cow i okay this this beats this every day right um and then you can start talking more about the shakes once once they pick that up and they see it so <clears throat> lastly i blew up a big before and after picture of myself now um i i just had it and this is at walgreens um i just have it here i was able to prop it up on the table and boom like it was so simple and you guys want to know the best part about this as i was printing these pictures and my before and after picture the girl at walgreens i sampled like yes okay she was giving me my pictures and she's like wow are you a health coach i mean and boom we started talking and what do you know i got her info and i sent her a sample okay so i mean you never know you never know when these tools are going to be useful and you know i mean in this case it was in my prep work that it was useful so um showing proof showing proof of what it is that your displaying is super super important um figuring out are you going to lead with the products or are you going to lead with the business in my case in these style of events i choose to lead with the products personally now i can tell you um you can you can do whichever right there are there is so much to talk about and there's so much to um you know that here for everyone right whether they want to go ahead and start a business or whether they want to get healthier um in my in my um experience it's a lot easier to lead with the product and then if i find that somebody is you know say needing that additional income or you know whatever i can interject with the the business piece of it so for me that's how i chose um get their information so I printed out these little um, these little slips, and for my giveaway, I had them enter enter their info, um, kind of telling me what it is that their goals are, their first last name, phone number, and email. They fold it up, stick it in the hat, and boom! I what I did was I did a giveaway. My giveaway was a three day sample. Well, the girl that actually. Um, one the giveaway i will tell you i offered her the free three-day sample or 25 dollars off girlfriend took the 25 dollars off boom another customer right there so you know sometimes it's just a matter of um being a little more um, thinking out of the box right and in this case vendor events are kind of thinking out of the box for us a little bit so I know that I have talked a lot. Um, I do have some more tips, but I don't want to take up all of our time. So I am going to go ahead and pass it on over to Laura, and then she is going to send it on over to the grocers, and I will close us out. Laura? Hello. Thank you so much, Alexis. I, I am. Cannot hear you. Cannot hear me. Can anybody hear me? No? I'm getting a yes from Vandrea. Okay, cool. Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> I was like, did not expect that. Hey guys, if you don't know me, I'm Laura Woods. I'm a 4K leader here, soon to be 12K. Um, I absolutely love this team. First time hosting a Sunday huddle, co-hosting, so I am totally sweating, so just bear with me. But I have a ton of notes. Um, but I am going to try and make it short and sweet. I did um, my very first vendor event, um, maybe like two months ago. Um, pandemic, everything, right, kind of winding down, felt comfortable enough to get out in the world and see people and do all the things. So I was like, let's do it. One of the things that I had as a goal for 2022 was to do three vendor events. So needed to rip that bandaid off and get going. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my event, how it went, um, and then my main takeaways and some things that I think you absolutely need if you're gonna do a vendor event. Um, so the vendor event that I did um, is something called JBF, which is just between friends. Um, it is a pop-up consignment shop that happens in the fall and the spring um, at a couple different locations around Dallas-Fort Worth. 
I think they have them in other parts of the country as well, but basically parents can sign up as a consigner to um, sell, you know, baby clothes, baby toys, gently used, um, secondhand type stuff. So it's a way for parents to make some money. Um, and then you can also go there and shop super cheap. You can get super cheap clothes for your kids, maternity clothes, toys, um, all kinds of different stuff. So I have actually been a consigner a few different times. I have a three-year-old and um, I was like, the last event that I had gone to, I noticed that there was a Scentsy booth and I was like, wait a second. So I reached out to the lady that put these on and she said, yeah, we do occasionally have vendor spots for, you know, different locations, depending on the venue. So I reached out, I signed up, um, and definitely don't spend too much money on it. I do think that mine was overpriced, but I wanted to get out there. And I just thought that that was it was a business expense, right? Like it's a tax write-off. So I just chalked it up to that. And it was a really great learning experience. So mine was a hundred dollars. Again, probably a little bit too much um, looking back, but it was my first one. So I didn't know what I was doing. So I was like, yeah, that sounds like a great deal. Sure. Sign me up. Um, so I prepared a lot in advance. I had um, one day sample packs. I had three day sample packs. I had like every single kind of DFT, every single kind of shake flavor, um, every single um, pack that I put together had three-step instructions. It had my business card. Um, so I had like two big boxes of all of the stuff that I had prepared. And I was like, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Um, I also had like printed a QR code that linked to my sample request website. Um, the I like to use QR code monkey, but you can actually create a QR code in Canva if you guys are familiar with Canva. Um, I have access to a really large printer at work. I'm a graphic designer by day. So I actually printed off letters that were 17 inches tall and made my own banner that said tired of being tired question mark. And I had this like enormous banner on the front side of the table that said tired of being tired, right? Like certainly that's going to get some people's attention since I knew that my audience was going to be mostly parents. So I thought that I was ready. I was like ready to go. So I show up early, right? And it was the last day of the sale. So it was supposed to be the busiest day. Again, I was super prepared. Now I did this by myself. Again, takeaways, don't do it by yourself. Go with a buddy. Find somebody. If you don't know anybody on your team that lives near you, find somebody. I almost guarantee you that within Grace on Fire, there's probably somebody within an hour of you, okay? So use your resources like beyond the Grace on Fire page. Get on the NMMs. Find somebody that's local to you. Um, team up with that person because it's really hard to man your table whenever you have to get up and go to the bathroom for <laughs> just for that sake alone. So how did mine go? First of all, I was super nervous. I am not a shy person. Like I've never met a stranger. I can have a conversation with a brick wall. You can't tell, but I was so nervous for whatever reason. I didn't have the protection of my screen to like protect me from these conversations, from these converse, new conversations that I was navigating. So again, just try to prepare, have your elevator speech like Alexis was talking about. I think that's super key. You need a hook. You need a reason for somebody to stay at your table and keep talking to you. So at my event, I did end up selling three three-day sample packs, which is awesome. I, each one of them, I got their you know, first name, last name, phone number, email. So I was able to put them in the computer as a customer. Um, I tried doing a giveaway also, but uh, that was pretty much just to gather the email addresses for potential prospects, but I didn't really get a whole lot of interest in that. I, I don't think that I marketed it very well, to be perfectly honest, um, but I did have several printouts of um, what I consider to be like really impactful progress or transformation photos. I also had those on the table as well so that, I mean, everybody loves seeing a good transformation, but Alexis, I love your suggestion of that book. I think that that is absolutely genius. Um, Again, you need a hook, okay? You need some way to draw them in and open a conversation. Um, keep the conversation about them, ask questions. You wanna listen with the intent to understand, okay? You want to pinpoint, what are their pain points? Because I guarantee you, we probably have a solution for it, right? 
Some other things that you absolutely need are business cards. And first of all, if you don't already have business cards, you need to just go to the Lavelle gear store in your back office and go get you some business cards. I think it's like 25 bucks for 250 or 500 of them. But I give those things out like candy. Like anytime somebody is commenting on my DFT at the store, I'm like, here, my business cards say tired of being tired. Boom. Like it is such a great conversation starter. Um, you also, I think, need products to sell. And this is where I totally drop the ball. I focus mainly on three steps because that is our bread and butter. That is what has helped me lose and keep off over 65 pounds. But I didn't, I, I just didn't prepare in the right way, I feel like. I think I overprepared with my three steps kind of stuff. So I definitely think that you need protein bars. Now that we have alkaline water, you need to get a couple cases of alkaline water. Um, a case of ooey or maybe two, um, and activate thirst and pink pro. 95% of our products are created in single servings. This is very strategic from Lavelle's part because it's easily shared, right? Like it is super simple to hand somebody an activate packet and say, put this in a bottle of water. You're going to love how you feel. So take advantage of that. Like, I don't know what the cost ends up being whenever you sell them by themselves. But again, anytime somebody buys one of those single products, get their first name, last name, email, and phone number. You want a way to follow up with them. Um, after we move into, we're about to close and purchase a house. So after we move, one of the very first things that I'm planning on buying is one of the giant pop-up banners that Lavelle sells in the gear store. Um, Again, it's going to be a tax. I'm not giving you financial advice, but it's going to be a tax write off, right? It's a business expense. And that is one of the things that they have some really, really well designed marketing. Um, yeah, they're 300 bucks, but it, you can use them again and again and again and again. And especially like, I don't know, find somebody and y'all go half on it. And it's just the kind of thing that it is. Um, I think that it's going to be well worth the money whenever we make that type of an investment. I'm not going to have to have a handmade <laughs> sign that says tired of being tired. But again, these are the types of things that you want to be able to start that conversation. You want to be able to get somebody at your table asking questions so that you can ask questions to them so that you guys can Again, begin to form a relationship. You're doing it the same thing that you do on social media, but you are doing it in person. That is the only difference. And it doesn't have to be as scary as it sounds, um, but I do think doing it with a partner is definitely going to be um, more beneficial. It's just going to make it a little bit easier, take a little bit of the pressure off of you. So I think that that's pretty much all that I have. I did see one... I mean, I don't know if you're like technically allowed to resell single products, um, but I have had like people at work ask me for a protein bar and I've sold it to them. So, I mean, I think it just kind of depends on maybe Alexis can speak on that, but it just kind of depends on each person. So in my thinking is we sell the we sell a three day sample, right? So um, you could, same exact concept. Um, now I wouldn't go and sell out of my own supply, say a box of our vitamins. That's just not, that's not right, right? I'm not gonna make, I'm not gonna make back my money. Uh, but if they go to my site and they purchase it, then that's when, that's when I make it. So I think in that case, yeah, absolutely. Um, you can definitely, and now, so for me, one of the things that I did too, and I didn't talk about it was I sold water and every single water that I sold, I included a, um, a stick of activate. So yeah, I mean, and I sold it for a dollar. So just like, as if you were to go anywhere else and buy water, you know, I just had a cooler. So yeah, I think that's per perfectly fine to sell a, a single day. So awesome. Thank you so much, Laura. And yeah, we're going to have to do an event together because I didn't know you lived here in the DFW area. So yeah, girl, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. The grocers, I know that they are so excited to tell us and about their experience. And I'm going to tell you guys, they have a ton of experience in this field. So I know they're really excited to share with you their thoughts on it. So take it away. Good evening. Can you hear us? 
Everybody good. All right. Hi. Great, great. So my name is Darren. Um, <clears throat> this is my wife, Carrie. We are each both uh, 12K leaders here on Team Thrive for Life and Grace on Fire. And uh, it's an absolute privilege to have been asked to do this event. Um, it's even more special because we're sharing it with our direct side sister, Laura, yes. and then everyone else here on this team, because obviously we're all so uplifting of each other. So I want to go into just a few technical details, um, kind of tips for the actual event. We've already reinforced this. Samples are important. Um, we're trying to get samples in everybody's hands and whatever works for you. Now, Laura had mentioned something that I wanted to show as well. There's the two things. When we make sample packs, we make several. We want to have those on hand. We want to make sure that we can, you know, kind of hit people's different varieties when it comes to men's and women's capsules and even some shake flavor varieties. We like to mix that up just a little bit. But we too include a couple of different cards. And I'm going to wait for the white balance to switch on this one. This is an instruction card we like to put in there. Now, I was gifted uh, the graphic for this from Candace Hall, so Big Blue Deputante, so another help from our sideline there. Um, but again, it's the instructions, and then we uh, did a little Canva down here and threw our picture on there. So it tells everybody what you tell them, but nobody listens and gets the whole picture mm -hmm. of how to take their three steps properly. We want to tell them as many times as possible because that's obviously one of the challenges in sampling. Now, QR code monkey, absolute golden. Laura mentioned that. Now, what I do is I put a QR code on ours in every sample, and this might even work if you hold it up your phone to the camera now. Um, but this one links to a video on my YouTube channel, which is me taking the three steps. So not just the verbal instructions or the written instructions, but me literally doing it like I do in my stories every single day. So another way to use a QR code and QR code monkey is important because uh, some of the sites out there either charge you for as many clicks as you get or they, they time bomb. Um, I haven't found those limitations with QR code monkey. When you're at the event, and I'll let Carrie talk about some more of the details, but we like to have a laptop or a tablet with us. Um, if you're fortunate enough to have Wi-Fi connection there, it's nice to just sign people up for, um, for their accounts right away if possible. Uh, even if it's just signing them up for a sample, we can do that right there. And then we had the Lavelle page up, which had the uh, E60 video that we saw at Thrive Palooza running. So that was, again, another kind of hook to get people in there and some audio playing in the booth. And it wasn't just, uh, just completely quiet. Mm -hmm. Now, we, <clears throat> we are definitely products of the product. I take 13 products uh, a day usually, and, and it, that means we have a lot on hand. And the fact that Laura mentioned the, the single sample size of a lot of things, <clears throat> first of all, most of our packages have the nutritional information on them. So it's actually okay to sample them singly. Um, just because they are somewhat packaged in that respect. But um, we always have samples of things beyond the three-step. I like to bring Activate, Blast, Boost, um, Thirst. And if you want to have instant results, give them a heat or a chill packet, have them take it right then. Um, you're going to get instant results with either of those. So if they need a little boost or they're having a bad day, either way, just it'll help them out. Um, so really, that's kind of where I wanted to start. But they're there for an event. They know why they're there. Don't feel weird about talking to people. It's very, very important. Right. So let me throw it over to my babe here. Well, in regards to samples as well, Alexis, I loved the last vendor event that you posted picture of where you yeah. had your table set up and you had your big carafe, you know, with the spigot and you were able to do samples of yeah. the pink pro that way. You know, that's great because then you can control how much you're giving. You don't have to give someone an entire can of ooey, right? You can, you know, control the portion that way, which I think is great. Um, but absolutely sample, sample, samples, samples. um, the vendor shows that we've done, you know, think of the table that you want to approach. It needs to look professional, right? So you have to put a little bit of time, even set it up at home beforehand and really, you know, stage your table, make it look attractive, make it look professional. Um, the banners that Laura were talking about earlier, those are incredible. They retract, they yeah. are then protected for transport when you're not using them. They are an investment, but those are a great tool. Um, the other thing that you can get on the gear store is um, the table covering that's going to have the Lavelle logo on it. Again, an investment. If you're not in the position to purchase one of those, just get a black solid table covering from Amazon for 20 bucks, you know, something that's just plain and simple. And then you can dress it up with some of those printed materials, like Alexis was mentioning, go to the back office and print out documentation of the things you do feel strong and confident talking about, because then you can really focus on those, show people the labels, you know, and really have that backup when you're talking to people. Um, I like Darren said, always like to have the boxes of the main things that we are um, first and foremost uh -huh. users of the product. So our three steps, we have them there. You know, it's visual, um, but again, it allows people to really look at the labels because 
everyone's questioning, well, what is this? You know, what is, does it have this ingredient or I'm allergic to that? And we can really scrutinize it with them and, you know, give them that personal attention that they are looking for. Um, and the before and after pictures are money. Like they're the, always the thing that gets people's attention. And so <clears throat> I think it's crucial to have before and afters of yourself, um, being able to point and kind of connect with pictures that maybe are more of the body style you connect with or whatever are great, but to see a real person, to know that that's real results, that's, I think that that's a huge part. So don't be afraid to share your own before and after, even if your now isn't where you plan to be, it still speaks for the progress that you can speak for. So I think that's a big deal. Um, so again, make your table look presentable. Um, use uh, photos, like you said, Alexis, um, use picture frames, laminate things, you know, just make it look like the kind of table you'd want to approach. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're going to see better results of people coming to your table. And remember the reason that we're here is that information grab. So in years past for other um, things we maybe have done for our day jobs, as far as vendor shows, um, a spin wheel is something that usually gets people's attention. So if you can, you know, put something that's a percent off your first order or free product with first order or a free sample, you know, again, it's just that reason to get people to your table. If it's not a giveaway, it's just some other fun interactive thing that you can do. Um, let's see, what else do I have here? Um, the comp plan. I feel like, you know, at these other vendor events, you're going to have people just like you, you know, Laura, you mentioned Sensi. Um, you might have other competitive products there in the realm of the MLM market, right? So these people are also going to be um, a little more tuned into, you know, the term comp plan and opportunity than maybe the average just shopper there for a mom to mom sale. So have that available. If you're not super strong in verbalizing it, then have it, have it in a printout, have it in that binder. That's, you know, that's your backup. So if you're not fluent in the products, have that there, because that's going to, again, show that you are professional and that you have all of this documentation to support and, Hey, let's schedule a time to talk about it beyond. Um, but again, thinking of those other vendors that yeah. are going to be there, don't be afraid to leave your table and go and network with the other vendors that are there that are set up. So all the different types of shows you might be able to align with are going to be, you know, like you said, church related, um, school, farmers markets, a big deal around here in the summertime. And those are usually a real cheap entry. So that's a great way to just see people in your own local community, mom to mom sales, that sort of thing. Um, but health and wellness is for everyone. So don't be afraid to dabble in some of those other things, you know, that you think, well, Am I really going to target the right demographic there? Because you can talk to anyone about feeling better or what their needs are. And so there's okay. a lot of opportunity there. And if not from a customer perspective, just to be able to feel out, hey, where are the great shows? Where are the ones you have successful foot traffic? Where, where are the ones to avoid that are maybe not scams, but are a huge waste of time and money? So, you know, if you can align with others in the industry that way too, you know, certainly just another... Right on. Another thing you have to work with. Um, I'm looking at my list to see if there's anything else I'm forgetting. Oh, this one was a big one. Have your next event planned so that you can be already advertising it to this new audience that you have this particular day. So even if it's something okay. super basic, like Alive. an online event, right? Yeah. Direct them to your social. Hey, my next um, activity is going to be here at um, the school um, spring carnival because I'm sponsoring, you know, and supporting there or at the, you know, the kids little league or at the mom to mom or the wherever it is, have that next event already lined up so that you can be advertising it and hopefully improving, you know, the foot traffic you'll see there too. So, and again, I guess, lastly, um, engage you have to be prepared to talk to people. There's nothing worse than I think Alexis, you said this at the beginning, not <clears throat> being able to approach um, not feeling like there's a, a genuine way to have a conversation. You know, you see a lot of people behind the table at vendor shows and they're on their phone and they're looking down or they're sitting in a chair, they're eating, they're not at all present. Approachable. And, right. you know, that's, those are the ones that are probably not seeing much foot traffic because they're, there's no reason to go and stop in at that table. Right. So be present. Right. But, you know, face-to-face -face is truly key. And, and obviously that's what we're talking about here. Um, I've heard this enough times that I'm considering getting a tattoo on my arm right next to Courtney's Zoom <laughs> code here. 
Um, that's Coop's phrase that I've heard on almost every MMM, which is it all goes down in the DMs. Yeah. Right. Now we hit the promoter switch in 2021, right in the middle of the pandemic. So all we were doing was direct messaging, right? And we're fairly adept at building relationships that way. Um, but face-to-face -face is a really big deal. And, and the reason I say this is because we all know that through text messaging, tonality, excitement, that stuff doesn't Context. translate. Got exactly. Yeah. And it's one of the main reasons why we always suggest that you put voice messages in your Facebook messages as much as you can, especially, we do it especially when we have a new customer or a new promoter sign on, because we just want to convey just how excited we are that they're joining us with this journey. Um, and the voice is the only right. way that we can physically do that. And we also, you know, I can, I, I feel like I can tell I can trust somebody if I hear them talk to me and if I see their face. And um, that's really an important thing. Now, some people are, 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 are hesitant to do this and do vendor shows. Maybe it's just a little gap in your product knowledge. Maybe you just don't know enough that you think you know enough. And, you know, Carrie said, always have that backup of having a binder with the documentation in it because we have all of that. But if you just spent one day just looking at each PDF and the next day a new PDF, you'd have tremendous talent, uh, product knowledge in just 20 days. And I think your confidence would just skyrocket as a result of that. Yeah. And you'd be more adept to, to talking in, in person. Or um, be willing to be vulnerable and say, you know what, I'm not sure. And I want to get you the answer to that. So yeah. I'm going to find out and how can we connect so that I can get you that answer yeah. and have it be the right answer. So yeah. Well, and face-to-face -face for us has been 100%, 100% more effective than through direct messages. It's a simple example is, always wear your DFT where it could be seen. I think we always say that. But I went to my dentist, the dental technician saw, we started talking about it. I got her a sample. She was a customer four days later and gave us a review that said, man, I always felt like I've been walking around in cement and Thrive has really changed my life. And that's all just because we had a face-to-face -face and she trusted me. And it was just an easier way to connect than it was through a whole day of DMs back right. and forth. It's just a different thing. Yep. Yep. customer service. Right. It's all about service. It's about just making them feel like you care. It's asking those questions about what they need and then giving them solutions to right. that problem. It's not looking at it as a sale, but how you can help. And so that's why right. I feel like any vendor event that's within your budget that makes sense for the audience and the kind of advertising they're going to do and the foot traffic you hope to see, you know, budget accordingly, but um, almost no audience is the wrong audience right. for what we do. So don't right. be afraid to try. Yeah. So it's all a write off. No real so. magic formula to what we're talking about. We've given you a lot of tools between the, the four of us, um, but really just do it. Just do it. Because even if you do it, like we say, when you fail, you learn. And when you learn, you know what you want to do the next time. And the next time gets better. And every single time it just gets easier and easier. So really it's, it's not like anything different. So use the documents that we have in the resources and, and downloads. And, uh, you know, the knowledge is all there for you to just kind of get over that hump and, and get that confidence and uh, go out and talk to people live. So, yeah, that's what we've got, guys. Awesome, yeah. man. You guys are bomb. And I love the fact that, you know, that Carrie was talking about, like, if you don't know, it's okay to say, I don't know. Um, you know, we don't, we don't have to know it all, especially coming into this business. Sometimes it's like information overload, right? And you try to learn it, try to learn it, try to retain it, learn a little more, right? Right. And, and that's part of the reason that we've got these MMMs so much so that not only is there always an available time for you to join, but so that you are continually learning and you're continually gaining that knowledge daily. I can't tell you how many MMMs I've been on. And very recently, like just with Melissa last week that I learned something and I'm like, wow, oh my gosh, I'm blown away. So, okay. I wanted to show you guys, I pulled out a couple of things. I ran and grabbed them real quick. So one of the things that I had uh, done was I printed this out. And so this is, it's a Thrive With Me coupon. And so what it is, is I included it in all of my three-day samples. And um, it's uh, $20 off your first order. Mention this coupon and you'll receive $20, $20 off your first order. And the person who, who referred you will receive a $20 uh, or, and we'll receive free shipping on their next order as well. So what this is, is they can take this, they can give it to their friends, then boom, now their friends are thriving under their account. And you now got two new customers.
customers, right? And so you're helping them already pass that knowledge along to their friends with this Thrive With Me coupon. So, you know, honestly, um, we all have credits. Even if you didn't want to do, say, $20 off, maybe you want to do like, oh, save 20%, and then you could do retail versus the auto ship price. I mean, like right there, you can always use that. You don't have to have a sale in order to be able to, you know, to make the sale. So I wanted to show you guys that. And then <laughs> um, I hope I don't get in trouble. Nobody report me to compliance, okay? <laughs> Please. But as I was leaving Palooza, um, and Carrie was talking about how being prepared. I was already in my mind preparing for this event that I had planned. So I was leaving and I was going down the stairwell. They had shut the doors. They had closed up Palooza. And I grabbed this from the, the bin. In, okay from the garbage bin and I turned it into my own okay <laughs> Yay! it was the registration sign that they had um I changed it and I added you know my own lettering here it says oh gosh I don't even know what it says under this thrive something but anyways um you know and then down here I talked about what e60 is I printed this out and then I and I wrote yes you can like I made this into my own because I needed more um sprucing up and I knew that I didn't have a fancy cover table I had a white tablecloth okay um now absolutely I added pops of color and I even had a canopy that when we went to put it up it broke on us so um one of the uh, another tip I will tell you is if you have a canopy make sure you bring weights to hold it down um I know a lot of places require that and when I was there I actually saw there's specific weights for canopies so um you don't have to bring your you know your dumbbells or whatever to hold it down uh what does that say i was looking uh, of course okay yeah um, so i know that there was a couple of questions i was going to go back and circle back as far as what the questions are i know that i did see a question about asking if lavelle has to approve this no if you are doing a vendor event, you do not have to get approval. Um, Lavelle was asking, I know that they were doing the um, uh, thousand events in a hundred days or something like that. Um, and that is where you were submitting your information for your event. And they wanted you to send pictures and, you know, kind of talk a little bit about the event that you were doing. So what they were really trying to do was to get us to get out and to get out in the field that is what that was for now if you're doing an actual local that's completely different that's where you have a stage and you've invited hundreds and hundreds of people a lot of times the ceos will show up to these events um, but they're usually hosted by a 200k and there's multiple 200ks that are there at least the ones that i have been to um they're not it's not anything that's small scale so what we're talking about is um more on the small scale kind of like the farmer's market like um darren and carrie were talking about so there's that um lastly oh the strive magazine if you guys don't have the strive magazine um <clears throat> courtney i'm still winning on mine <laughs> i was actually going to have the strive magazine open and you know the good part about the strive magazine is that it talks about um our promoters within the industry kind of some of their the things that they've been through in their life where they've been where they are now it's a really good um tool to use and people could flip through that magazine I would not necessarily give them away. Um, you can if you want, but I would more so have it there so that people could look at it. Um, don't overload people. Do not overload people with information. Like if you keep it short, sweet, and simple, they'll be more receptive to what it is that you're offering. Um, sure, we have a whole different, you know, plus line products and everything under the sun that they would be able to, you know, probably benefit from as well. 
but I really wouldn't go into, I, for me, I stuck to the three steps. Sure, I had the water, I had the sticks of activate with the water, um, but it wasn't something that I was selling. It wasn't something I was like really um, promoting in that aspect. So really think about what it is that you can draw somebody into your table. Maybe it's mints, maybe it's chocolate candies, maybe it's bubbles, right? Um, but something to where people want to come to your table. And um, for me, I know it's always free stuff, man. Free, free stuff brings people in. <laughs> people want free stuff, right? Um, so I, I loved, I did have mints there at the table. Um, you know, you could do whatever, whatever you choose, but I think free, you know, and honestly, I got, I got the, the mints at the dollar store. I think I got like two bags of them. So you don't have to do anything that again, that, that cost a whole lot of money. Now I know that when Coop did her, uh, vendor event, she was given away the free samples. Now, um, the, the three day samples. Now, you know, again, this all kind of ties back into what is it that you can afford? What is it that you can offer your audience? Um, maybe, honestly, maybe you don't even have enough product on hand. I mean, personally, I wouldn't go there without product. I did have my empty boxes stacked, not only my three products of empty boxes, but the big boxes that they get shipped in, I had those there as well. They don't know that it's empty. Like, but you can use that as a display. It's it's a nice, attractive way to showcase what it is that you have. Um, a friend of mine was like, dude, a trash can. A trash can, like people walk and they want to drop trash and there's nowhere to drop trash. So if you've got a little tiny trash can, they will come to your table to drop their trash. And now you have them in your aura. So you're able to now have a conversation with them because they, they drop some trash there, right? Um, maybe it's a fan, like on a hot day, maybe it is literally just a fan that you have up and people wanna cool themselves off. And you know, it's, it's free. All you have to have is, is electricity to be able to, you know, to run to that. Um, and then we talked about the samples. So yeah, so I think honestly ending this, I really hope that if you've never done a vendor event, I want you to know it is not scary. It is not absolutely invite your friends, invite your sideline sisters, tell your team that you're doing this so they can come out and they can support you. Um, if you don't have anyone in the area, Laura, Laura gave a really good point. Drop it in that, you know, drop it in beyond a million or on um, Grace on Fire. Sorry, we're not beyond a million anywhere <laughs> anymore. But, you know, drop it in there. See if someone wants to go ahead and partner up with you. Maybe you guys want to split the cost of the table. Maybe it, maybe it is something that, you know, you guys can work out together. What, however way, maybe it's shift work. You know, one works one hour while the other one is walking around talking to vendors. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of things that you can think about here and how it can help you and how it can benefit you. But ultimately, ultimately, the thing that you want to do is build connections. That's really what it's about, which is the same thing we do online. The same exact thing. It's just easier to talk to people face to face. At least for me, it is. I know some people, it's the exact opposite. But, you know, when, when we are very used to being in front of our screens and talking to people online, sometimes we forget how easy it is to just open your mouth and talk about what it is that you have your hands on. So, um, you know, if you are going after exponential growth, um, which I think everybody here really is, um, it is going to require you to think a little differently. And, you know, maybe that you act a little differently than, than the norm. Maybe um, you end up being a little different. That's okay. And, you know, and that's, that's me. Like, I'm, I think very differently. Um, but, you know, there's something about being brave. There's something about going out there and just getting it done and getting in front of people. Um, don't, don't make it scary. It's not. 
you do this daily. The only difference is instead of using your keyboard, you are using your mouth. So um, I hope that you guys got value here and make sure I totally buy samples from you at the gym, Sabrina. <laughs> love that. Oh my gosh, that is awesome. Well, you guys have a fabulous evening. I don't believe Courtney or anybody yes, else. Yes, yes. Oh, oh, okay. Go on. Sorry. Um, I texted you, but I know, I know you're oh. talking and you're on a roll and y'all did so oh. good. That was so amazing. So really quick, I just wanted to tell you guys, okay, full disclaimer, I was in the shower during the first part of the Zoom, listening to y'all, and I'm like, Alexis, you better not, <laughs> you better not call on me, I'm going to be getting dressed, so I wanted um, to mention just a couple of things, number one, don't forget about the book club, um, several people, um, several leaders have gotten together, they're doing the book club, um, Mel, drop that back in the leadership chat and let's shoot that out to the rest of the team again. Um, so just be looking for that flyer. There's a book club. They meet on Mondays. Okay. Number one, number, I'm not going to even list the numbers just really, really quick. So um, this weekend was phenomenal and I feel bad because I'm not bringing that back to you immediately. It's just, it was so good and it was so much that I literally need time to go through my notes in my backpack of everything we learned from Brock. Um, honestly, that was one of the best trainings I've ever been to on how to sell on your story. It was very, uh, there's a formula, there's like, there's, it's going to be so great. We need to do a training on it. I need to wrap my head around it. I need to go and memorize. Okay. Slide one, slide slides one through five. What is each one supposed to do? Look at the formula that he gave us before I can come and teach it to you guys. I, I just need to go re, you know, go through my notes. Okay. Um, so just be expecting that to be coming in the next, I'd say week. Um, I am out of town, but two weeks at the most. Okay. I, I, that is something I'm really, that was so valuable. We told Jason and Paul, like, thank you so much. That was so freaking valuable for us to be able to bring back to you guys. Um, also, it was really great to just talk to uh, Jason and Paul, you know, they gave us some very blunt examples of what's going on in this industry right now. This industry as a whole is on a down cycle. Um, they were super transparent. And I love that about our CEOs. They're no BS. Um, they said, you know, they've been approached to consolidate and buy another company and they refused. And I was like, thank you, baby Jesus, because I know what company they were approached with buying. And I'm like, hallelujah. Thank you. Um, and they're like, you know, they have a lot of friends in this industry and they're like, one of their friends is business, uh, their company's down $300 million. And Jason's like, we're not down. He's like, we're not up right now, but we're not down. He's like, no bullshit. Like I'm telling you straight up, we're not down. We are just maintaining and stabilizing right now. He's like, there are other companies out there trying to sell their MLM companies that have been in business for 20 plus years. There are people like trying to get rid of their MLM companies right now. And he's like, not us. And it feels so good. So that was really cool to hear from him. Like I, it gives me goosebumps I, because, you know, they're not going to always come and tell us all that stuff. And, and it was just really freaking cool. And um, they also said, that there is going to be a mortgage bonus. We do not have any details. They were, they know they can't just mention something and not make good on it. They were like, no, there is, um, there is, <laughs> I agree, Karen, there is, um, a mortgage bonus coming. They're ironing out, ironing out the details. Do not put this on social media. This number I'm about to tell you absolutely talk up the mortgage bonus after they said it again the next day. And like, literally I made eye contact with Jason and he's like, it is happening. This is some, this isn't an idea. I'm just kind of talking about in front of y'all. Like we will have this done. And I'm like, okay, I feel comfortable with us saying, you know, prepping our audiences with, do you have a mortgage? What is your mortgage? What is your highest household bill? Absolutely. He said he would love for it to be three grand. That is not a promise. That he literally was like, I have no details. He's like, that's what's in my head. I don't know. He said up to three grand. Guys, I'd be happy if it was a grand. I would be ecstatic. 
for anything because if you think about that jay said so you're telling me that they're going to do something where where we have our two largest household bills covered he's like wow and i'm like yeah man that's where their mind is during this you know whatever you want to call is going on in the world so what a blessing um the trip will be loaded into our back office this week i have no idea where we're going um i'm super excited for our next trip and i just felt i don't really know a better word than just this word i felt very safe after this weekend i felt very reassured i felt very safe i looked at all the girls at dinner last night and i said i know that you know we've had things happen in the world and in our team and this and that and i said i feel so good and so safe and so peaceful, especially talking to other leaders. And I said, man, it wasn't because they were like, hey, we're launching like these supersonic products. It wasn't any of that. It was like no bullshit, no fluff, just I feel safe and I feel more than ever like we're in such the right place. They they were very honest and said, um, this industry goes through up cycles, it goes through down cycles, and they said the number one thing you need to do is you need to pretend like this is day one, week one. And I'm telling you, I passed her on my phone at dinner the other night, and I had this like outrageous PPA, and the, the number really isn't even what the focus was, it was the mentality behind that number. And I told every leader at the table, I'm like, I want you to look at that, and I don't want you to think about I want to get that number. I want you to think what was Courtney's mentality? It was like my PPA was like 152 for 30 days, right? I'm not trying to get 152. I'm not trying to get fill in the blank. I'm trying to have the mentality that I'm so effing hungry because I know we're in the right place. I know we're with the right products. I know we're with the right CEOs that have our backs that I'm starving for that next person that wants to go and change their life. And I'm not afraid. And I'm not shaking when the wind blows. And I just feel so good after this weekend. So I wanted to share that with you guys really quick. Um, it was really awesome that 20 leaders from Grace on Fire were there. Guys, that's phenomenal. That is phenomenal that we have that many top leaders within our community. Um, that's something to be really proud of, whether you were there or whether it was just your side sister. Because I promise you, the last time I went, I went alone. This time there was 20 of us. I can't even wrap my head around what it'll be next time. Um, be looking for us to come out with the training from what we learned this weekend with Brock. It was so good. So good. And thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Alexis. Um, you know, I am not an in-person person, but I'm going to tell you, like I told the girls this weekend, I said, there is something about being around people and talking about this company and talking about these products that makes you just feel so freaking good. And so your confidence, like your confidence, my confidence soars. I'm not sitting behind a screen. Yeah, maybe I'm scared or nervous or this or that. And it's the same thing for these events. Like, you, your confidence grows when you do things you're afraid to do. And uh, I just know like we are made for such a time as this. So let's go have a kick-ass week. Thank you to you leaders for leading this Zoom tonight with all of those great tips and tricks. And from putting a trash can at your table to having a before and after, like, man, those are some great, great tips. So thank you guys. You did amazing. And let's go have an awesome week. Bye, guys.